Now it's time for us to talk about WordPress posts. Posts are the building blocks of your blog within a WordPress website. Even though their intended behavior is to be in a blog, we'll be looking at how you can use posts for all sorts of different things in your website. Posts allow you to share your thoughts, insights, and updates with your audience in a structured and organized manner. Therefore, they are the perfect solution for both placing in blogs along with any other section of your website where you want to make timely updates and be able to engage with your audience. A post is a type of content that's primarily used for blog entries. These would be things like sharing articles, news, updates, thoughts, and experiences, or time-sensitive content. Posts are typically displayed in chronological order, making them suitable for time-sensitive information. Key characteristics of a WordPress post are that they are usually displayed in this reverse chronological order, which means the newest posts will be displayed first. You can also incorporate categories and tags. Organizing your post using categories and tags will help users to find relevant content. By default, comments are enabled for posts, which allows visitors to engage in discussions. Posts are typically included in your website's RSS feed, making it easy for users to subscribe to your blog updates. And finally, you can assign a featured image to each post, which is often displayed in blog listings and summaries. Let's go ahead and jump into WordPress and see how we can go about creating posts. From your main dashboard, you'll want to go to the post area. The subcategories we have available are to display all posts, to add a new post, to augment or view your categories and or tags. I'm going to go to all posts. By default, when WordPress was installed, a sample post was created. Because I want to create a new post, I can click the add new post button up here in the upper left, or I can click the button from the main menu. Either way, it's going to take you to the new post area. If you've already created WordPress pages, you will see that posts look very similar. We have the same sort of editor and the same sort of features that allow you to add a variety of different sorts of media into your post. I'll start off by adding a post title. Then I'm going to click in the next area and start adding content. You can either start typing here and by default, this will create a paragraph. Or in my case, I'm going to paste in content that I have created in another word editing application. I'm going to get rid of this first paragraph since it doesn't have any meaning to my post. So far, everything that we have just done really resembles creating a page. However, when you're working with posts, you have some different areas that are available. If we go to the post tab over here on the right, you will see that we have some new options. First of all, we can edit the title of our post right here. So this is another place that you can rename the post if you need to. You can also set a featured image. The featured image is an image that will automatically show up with your post. We'll come back and add a featured image in just a minute, but I wanna show you what it looks like without a featured image. We also have the option to add an excerpt. By default, the post will display either all of the text or some of the text, depending on the theme that you're using, into the page that is going to display the posts. If you want to alter this, you can make a custom excerpt. You can also do things like change the status, decide when you want to publish the post, update the link of the post, augment the author, change the template that's being used for your post, and other options. Down below are where we can set our categories. Now, by default, WordPress is always going to come with the category of uncategorized. This is not very intuitive, 
and not very helpful. We can easily add new categories here or by going to our main menu and going into the category section. We have the same option here with tags, although there is no default tag. I'm going to not augment any of these things and simply click publish to accept the defaults. Once you go ahead and publish, you can view the post. I already have a tab open with my website and I'm going to simply click refresh. As you can see, the post that we just made, the tiny rainforest, is now displaying on the homepage of my website. Below it is the original post that came with WordPress. All the new posts are going to go on the top of this stack. And in addition to this, you can click the link, which will take you to a dedicated post page. On this page, you will only see your post along with the ability to leave comments on this post. Below is going to have a menu that will allow you to link to more posts and then the other default settings that are part of our WordPress theme. Keep in mind that these are just the default settings. We have not augmented any of these things. Now at this point, it is worth mentioning that it's not really very helpful to have my post on the home page go to the dedicated post page because our entire post is showing on the home page. This is where the excerpt comes into play. Let's go back to the back end part of WordPress and let's augment this post a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and close the post panel, which will open up the default post categories. Here we're going to make some changes to our post. We'll start off by setting a featured image. This is going to take us to our media library where we can go ahead and choose any of the images to include inside of the post. I'm going to choose one of my images and I will set this as the featured image. If you ever want to remove this, you can click the remove button or replace it with something else. We're also going to add an excerpt. In the excerpt box that pops up, I will go ahead and either type or paste in the excerpt text that I want to include. The excerpt text should be a short, succinct summary of what your post article is about. In addition to this change, I'm going to go ahead and add a more meaningful category. So I will click the add new category button. Here I will assign a category name. I'm not going to have a parent category and I'm simply going to click add new category. It is possible that your post have more than one category assigned to it. I will uncheck uncategorized since this is not meaningful, but leave the terrariums category as my main category for this post. At this point, I am done making edits. I'll click save. And if we go back out to our website and refresh, you're going to notice that a change has occurred. First of all, our post is going to show our featured image. This will be predominantly displayed at the top of the post. In addition, it is going to show the rest of our post. You may notice that our excerpt is not displaying here on the home page. This has to do with how our theme is set up. We can easily modify this and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. If we go to the dedicated post page, once again, our featured image is going to show at the top of our post. All the rest of the content will remain the same. As you can see, the process of creating posts is fairly straightforward. It is a lot like creating pages. Just like with pages, you can insert any of the content that is available for you here. I'll go ahead and add an image into my post. I'm going to browse my media library and choose an image for this particular post. For this particular post, I'm going to change the resolution of my image from full size to medium. I want the image to display a little bit smaller, so I will go ahead and set this. At this point, I am liking the way my post looks. I will go to the post category and I'm going to set a featured image. I'll add an excerpt and I'll assign a category of terrariums. 
I'm going to publish my post. And now if we go back to our website and refresh, you'll see we have two posts. This post is displaying the entire post, the featured image, my text, my embedded image, and then will be followed by the first post that we made. Finally, the original post that was part of my WordPress install is also included. As you can see, the newest post will always be displayed at the top of the stack. If we go ahead and click on the title of the post and go to the post page, you can see that the post will be listed. In addition, it's going to list other posts that are available. And with this particular theme, it's going to show the name of the post along with the date that it was published. One other option that I want to point out is the name of the URL is inherited from the title of the post. If you want to change this, you will need to edit the slug in your post. So I am going to close the panel at the top to return to our post settings area. I'm going to click where it says a link and here is where you can customize the link. So instead of having my link be a breath of nature in the city, I'm just going to retitle this bring nature into the city. You can see that all of these separate words need to be separated as dashes. We will resave this post. And if we come back to WordPress and refresh this page, you will see that the new URL says bring nature into the city. Sometimes the title of your post will not be friendly for SEO purposes or just not descriptive. And in certain cases, you may want to change that. So you can easily do that here. Any of these other options can be augmented here as well. So my post was published today. If I wanted to pretend that this post was published a week ago, I can make changes to the date, the time, the month. And if we save now, and go back to WordPress and look at our homepage, which is displaying all of our posts, you'll now see that the first post that we made in this lesson, the tiny rainforest is showing first, and then the next post, which is the most recent one that we actually did, but we changed the published date, will now display underneath it. WordPress sees this post as being created on December 19th, as opposed to being created on the day it was actually made. The final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to return to my WordPress dashboard and we are going to go to our settings. We'll go to the writing category and we're gonna change our default post category to terrariums. I no longer want the default post category to be uncategorized. This is going to ensure that anytime I make a new post, whether I assign a category to it or not, the uncategorized category is no longer set to the default. In addition, I'm going to trash this original post because I do not want it to be part of my website. At this point, the post has been moved to the trash. I do want to mention that when you move something to the trash, it is still recoverable. If you were to go into the trash and then delete the trash or empty the trash, that is the only way that you're going to permanently delete something. This is true for both posts and pages. Hopefully this gave you a little overview about creating posts in WordPress. We will discover other ways in which we can use posts on our website as we continue through this course.